everyone, it's Sarah from Sassy Reads, and if you have recently subscribed to my channel, I just really, 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 really want to thank you. Um, I am almost at 100 subscribers right now as I film this, and I'm just really touched that so many people have watched me, or even just, you know, stick around every now and then to watch a couple seconds, and, you know, that really means the world to me, and I just want to say thank you. Also, um, I have currently been uploading book hauls that I filmed right before college started, and all those book hauls have mysteriously disappeared from my flash drive. The content itself is there, the videos are not. So like, when I pull up my flash drive with all my information, it has the, you know, the file, but nothing in the file, and so I lost like six videos. And I sh I'm probably just going to wait maybe until like fall break or Thanksgiving break to refilm all that. So that'll be another project. But I'm just going to talk about a bunch of the books that I've read since my last, you know, kind of wrap up review. And there have been a lot because, you know, I had a lot of time to read over the summer, even though I got a summer job. So let's dive right in. Um, I'm going to talk about a short story that you can read for free online. I don't really talk a lot about short stories, but I am doing the Tor Shorts project, and Tor, which is a publishing company that usually publishes sci-fi and fantasy, they publish uh, weekly, I think it is weekly, short stories on their website, and you can find them online for free. They're really fun. I found some really great ones and some not so great ones, but I do like to, you know, shine a light on the good ones. So the one that I'm going to talk about is excerpts from a film 1942 through 1987 by A.C. Wise. This is a really fabulous short story about a girl who is going to Hollywood in the 40s with the passion and the ambition to be a star. And she is plagued by ghosts of past women, um, one of those being the Block Dahlia, which is a very well-known case that is still unsolved as of today, and eventually she becomes another ghost, and it's really complex, really di not diverse, but it's, well, I guess it is a diverse story as far as tour short stories, because it's a ghost story, but I don't know, it's got like that old Hollywood vibe, and I just really enjoy that feel. It, filling. If you are a fan of old Hollywood and just ghost stories in general, I think you may really like that one. I'll leave the link for that short story down below so you can go and check it out. The next book that I read was Z, a novel of Zelda Fitzgerald by Therese Ann Fowler. Not sure if it's Therese or Therese. I'm pretty sure it's Therese, but regardless of what, however you say her name, this is a really interesting story. I give this book 4.25 stars. Um, it is good. And I really enjoyed it. The only problem I have with it really is that it's easy to feel very bored. And um, I am very intrigued by the Fitzgeralds. I absolutely adore The Great Gatsby and I've been meaning to read more of F. Scott Fitzgerald's work. I named my car after Zelda so you know I really like them, even though they're not the best of people. And I think that even though this is like a fictionalized account, um, it still is an interesting novel, and it can give you a little bit of insight into what they're like. Don't take everything as historically accurate, because this is not a biography, it's fictionalized. But um, it offers a lot of great, interesting information on the Fitzgerald, and I feel like if you are a fan of them, particularly if you're a fan of, like, um, The Beautiful and da The Damned and This Side of Paradise, especially if you're interested in the origin story of This Side of Paradise and why F. Scott Fitzgerald wrote it in the first place. It's really touched upon in here because, you know, it was written for Zelda after she kind of dumped him on the curb and was like, yeah, this isn't cutting it for me. She was like, you gotta get some money or we can't be together, so really interesting. They're both really horrible people, um, but, you know, sometimes I feel like horrible people kind of have to have one another, you know, like Gone Girl, for instance, with Amy and Nick, they're both horrible people, and they're both so toxic for one another, but without one another, they can't survive, and I feel like that's how I describe the Fitzgeralds and their relationship. Both horrible people, 
but they're both people, and I think that's really important because these, while these are, you know, historical figures, they were human, and I think that's really important, and I feel like this account really humanizes both of them, and it also doesn't paint one to be more innocent than the other, because Scott did a lot of messed up things, but so did Zelda, so it's not one or the other, which I really enjoyed. And then the next book that I read was one of my favorites. I was so excited when I saw this one at the bookstore because I had just read a review online for it about why it was somebody's favorite book of all time. And that is Dolores Claiborne by Stephen King. This novel, I've talked about it a few times already on my channel because I love it so much. I think it's so wonderful. It is about Dolores Claiborne and she is being interrogated in a police interview. It is told from completely first person narrative and it's really interesting because you know the narrative doesn't allow other voices to come in so it is literally only Dolores ever speaking and I think that's such a brilliant way to show how unreliable this novel could be but also how empowering it can be and there's like a lot of discussions that you can have I think I almost got lipstick on my book on um, what King was trying to portray with Dolores as a character and I absolutely adore this novel I've given it about five stars like as of right now this is my second favorite Stephen King novel I think it's so strong if you're not a fan of horror but you really like mystery suspense and thrillers as well as like just psychological studies and character driven novels I think you will really really enjoy this though um, huge trigger warning on sexual abuse of young children though because that um, this novel does deal with some darker topics and if that is something that can be harmful for you I just want you to be aware of that big theme also for murder but I don't I mean that's a lot of Stephen King's triggers is murder um, but that's yeah really amazing if you haven't read this one you should you should pick it up um, the next book I have to talk about is a poetry collection by one of my friends on Goodreads, Nenia Campbell. Um, I am a really big fan of Nenia's work. I have read her Horoscape trilogy, which is so good. It's about this girl who ends up meeting this guy, and it's a take on the um, trope that started with Twilight, where it was seen as okay if the guy was a stalker and exhibited stalker traits. But this shows it is not okay, and, you know, he's a psychopath, and it gets really dark, really disturbing, and big trigger warnings for everything dark with that series. But she wrote a poetry collection called The Pocketbook of Sunshine and Rain, and it's, like, 59 pages, and I really am trying to get into more poetry, and I'm also taking a poetry class right now, so, you know, this is a goal that I'm working with and accomplishing as of right now. But it's a really fun poetry collection. I wrote a review for it, so I'll link it down below. Um, I will read you one of my favorite poems. We buried the corpses of our arguments beneath the dining room table, picked over the bones emergent, and threw them at each other, a knuckle bone here, a rib there, no prayers were said, no flowers laid, only a hailstorm of finger bones to lord our dinner conversation. Picking the shards out of our teeth, we spit them at each other, always hoping someone would choke. That's my favorite poem. Um, there's a lot of great ones. It's a really short collection. You can get it online on Amazon. Overall, I gave the collection 4.5 stars. I really enjoyed it. I really recommend it, especially since um, it is an indie author. It's poetry, and I think um, if you are a fan of poetry, you may want to check it out. And yeah, those are the books that I read. Um, these are the two physical ones, plus the excerpts from a film, which is a really good short story. By the way, I gave that one five stars. Check that one out. And The Pocket Book of Sunshine and Rain, which is also on Amazon. And yeah, a lot of great books. All of them were over four stars. So check those out. And if you've read any of them or if you're interested, please let me know down below. And I look forward to seeing you in the comments. Bye. Thanks for watching.